This unique event brings together 13 of the world's most elite fighters in the ultimate testing round, the Octagon. It's time to begin the Ultimate Fighting Championship! Amidst a torrent of controversy that runs deeper than Niagara Falls, it's the Ultimate Fighting Championship. On the line, the heavyweight title between undefeated Mark the Hammer Coleman, a two-time UFC champion who's 5-0 in the octagon, and Dan the B. Severin, winner of UFC 5 and Ultimate Ultimate 95. Get ready for the most intense mixed martial arts contest on the planet. Judgment Day has arrived. Tonight welcomes the ultimate fighting championship. And this is Judgment Day. And what a spectacular matchup we have for you. Mark Coleman, the winner of UFC 10 and 11, undefeated in the octagon with a record of 5 and 0. Oh, against Dan Severn, UFC 5 champion, the winner of the ultimate ultimate in 1995. So it is clearly a case of the hammer versus the beast. Now the third member of our broadcast team, right now, let's go to Joe Rogan. Thanks, Bruce. I'm back here right now backstage. I'll be interviewing the fighters as they come out of the octagon, and I'll also be previewing the fights, the final fights in each weight division. I'll be talking to the fighters. We'll find out who's injured, who's going to be able to continue, and who's going to go in if we need an alternate. Anything we need to know, as soon as I find out, you'll know. Back to you guys. And some say in only 19 years of age, he has the potential, the raw skills, to be a great one in UFC competition. Oh, left hand, he got it. Oh, down goes down. the throw zone. Over with. He got caught. Wow, here he comes. And Ferrozo. He's got to he's got to hit this feet right now. On the ground, the Vitor Belfort lands it right to the head. Right another, another. That's it. That's it. It's over. Yeah. Ferrozo, look at Ferrozo. The fight is over. Joe Hamilton races in to help John McCarthy. The fight is over. It's been stopped. Barroso wants to continue, but clearly he has been pounded. He got hit while he was down. The referees did the right thing. They stopped it. It appeared Barroso when he went to his belly face down. Absolutely could not they intelligently him defend himself. So he the didn't rest know. of him Good job in stopping that fight. Uh, absolutely. He got caught on the button and he was taken out. What was your strategy? Beat the crap out of him. Well, I think he succeeded in that. Congratulations, Just the beginning, my friend. Severn and Coleman have made their way into the octagon. This one to decide the ultimate warrior on the planet. Coleman, undefeated. Severn, oh, Bez, what you nine you and ready? two. Only losses to Gracie and Shamrock. Here we go. We're underway. Two master grapplers. How will it unfold? Both guys picking their spots, then quickly Severin shoots for a leg. Now Coleman able to stop that leg shot. That was no problem. Dan really didn't set it up too well. Coleman trying to sink a choke there, Don? Uh, yes, sir. He's got in deep, and Dan, um, Dan's experience. Dan's got now that. Whoa. Right hand almost caught him. And that one did. That right hand scored by Coleman. And a jab from Coleman. Something you don't see much in the UFC. Coleman now on the mount. Had the mount momentarily. Severin rolled quickly. Yes. Severin deliberately turned to his stomach to avoid being caught because he was in the mount. He was actually mounted by Coleman. He could have rained some blows down. So he quickly turned. This looks like a wrestling match right now. Yeah, what you have here is uh, two fantastic wrestlers, and um, they've got a wrestling match going, exactly like you say. Uh, except a little bit of pounding going on. Coleman trying to throw a couple of punches to the back of Severin's head. But this is the first time we've really seen this kind of fight between two wrestlers where they're actually in what we call the referee's position. And now Severin felt that he couldn't go anywhere there, 
Davis, so he traded for the guard, but Coleman again is in the mouth. He is not in the full guard. Don, if he gets that right hand free, he can really fire. And he yeah. can choke Dan here with this headlock. He's trying to choke him right now. You say put the knee in the navel. Now Severin punching from the ground. Not a good area to hit. Those were little rabbit ones trying to get the Coleman in the move. Face. Shift position. Yeah, and that's it. into the chest and it was a definite choke. A storied career in wrestling. Three-time national Greco-Roman wrestling champion. Three-time All-American at Oklahoma State. A two-time NCAA runner-up. Recently competed in the Pan Am Tournament Greco-Roman in Puerto Rico. He's a guy, Jeff, who's got some great credentials and who has been around. Let's get it on! And we're looking at a big size difference here. Oh, oh quick takedown by Couture. Smart man. Smart man. Why punch with somebody so much bigger? Went right under him, took him down. Watch him milk this position now. It is a big body, 300 pounds. And there's a punch by Couture. Look at him move. Might want to choke here. Might look to choke here. Trying to sink it. Couture trying to sink the choke in that big neck. Okay, There's the towel. And he's in. Very quick. Good job, man. That's right. You're right there. Couture used the smarts. Relax right there. His name is Randy Couture. Uh, I thought mobility might be a factor. I wasn't sure how he'd approach me. If he'd take his time coming in or charge me, he chose to charge. All I had to really do was change levels. He walked right into the double leg and then I locked my hands around him and squeezed and I felt him loosen up to try to adjust for position. That allowed me to mount him. Uh, I tried to strike him once, which caused him to roll over. Here we go, getting ready for our heavyweight championship bout. And here comes Randy Couture. Roy Salger did not fare well earlier tonight, but Couture has a chance to get a belt. And Couture, an outstanding amateur wrestler. He is the current 1997 USA Wrestling Greco-Roman National Champion at 214 pounds. He'll be looking to make a world team later this year, but on his mind right now is an ultimate fight against a very tough opponent named Graham, and he's gonna rely on that wrestling ability to take his opponent down to the ground and try to control the position there. They meet in the middle of the octagon. Both wearing black trunks. Couture goes in for a double leg. He's got Graham up against the fence of the octagon. Couture will do a good job at keeping Graham down. The question is, does he have the experience to know how to finish? And particularly, I know he'll have the stamina to stay with this big man. But it looks as though here, Graham is going to be able to get back to his feet. And Graham grabbing the right hand of Couture. Now Couture goes up top. Well, he's preventing the choke. He's hanging out of the hand to keep the choke from being sunk in. You're not going to shake Couture doing that. The wrestler will stay behind you, even if it means going to his back. Now Couture with an opportunity to strike. Graham is moving well for a big man, but Couture wraps him up again. What he needs to do is get that arm over the top and see if he can't bait him into it. And there's the quickness of Couture again. Graham tries to get to his feet. Couture pulls him down. Well, this is a front headlock. The way you unbalance is to pull the man towards his nose and then spin. What Couture is looking for again is the choke. Won't get it here, but there's a nice little knee. And that'll soften up his opponent. Couple more by Couture. Once again, he gets behind. He'll use his speed to outmaneuver Graham. And I think at this point here, Graham is also starting to feel tired. And they headbutt each other, first front way, then backwards. Look it up. 
Well, here, is, here shows really how vulnerable on, Couture yeah. is. He really doesn't have anything else to go to here. He's looking really predominantly choked. Putting the leg in, he's going to try to stretch He's him. a little bit high there. Now he's okay with the legs, and he stretches him. Now he's got him down on the ground. Okay. Now he can go ahead and squat. Elbow to the head by Couture. Now punches to the back of the head. That's, That's going to do it. Steps in. That's going to do it. McCarthy stops the fight, and Couture Good wins job. it. Good job. He was taking some punishment there. Good job. Good Not sure whose Good blood that is on Come Couture. Now tell you show no respect tell. there at the Good end. Job. Great effort in his first time in the octagon. Ladies and gentlemen, we a lot of poise. A lot of poise. UFC 13. You said yesterday when we sat down and chatted with him, a big word, composure. And he comes from Huntington Beach, California, at his first ever UFC. Two-time California State Wrestling Champion. That was in JUCO. He also won a couple of local jiu-jitsu tournaments. He trains with Tank Abbott. How does that translate to the UFC? Watch for all Britain to try to strike and keep it on the feet, but he got in awful close. I don't know why he did that if he wanted to stay standing. Good quick move by Ortiz, who rains down some elbows. And Ortiz popping away at the head of all Britain. And now in the mount. He's got a good mount here. Legs have no defense. For all Britain, he's absorbing this punishment. Look for the referee here to step in. A lot of left hands landed by Tito Ortiz. Oh, some bad ones to the face, and finally the corner. The corner throws in the towel. So the corner beat the referee's stoppage, and that is it. Ortiz wins as the corner threw in the towel. Tito Ortiz Tito wins Ortiz. the bout. And he threw a flurry of Elbows, and he was game all challenger. business. It just looked like there was nothing he could do to keep you from taking him to the ground. No, too strong for him. Way too strong for him. Wasn't at my level, not at all. Well, what are your thoughts about going into the, to the main draw now? That's all I've been expecting. I knew I'd blow through this. I just want to get to that next round. How about I want to be in the championship? Give me a chance, I'll win it. The main event, perhaps the best ever in the UFC, as Marie Smith challenges Mark Coleman for the heavyweight title. It's a classic matchup of striker versus grappler. But there are some similarities between these two. Both are undefeated in freestyle competition. Both have tremendous wills to succeed, and both are passionate about the UFC. So tonight, the ultimate showmen square off, and the ultimate showdown, it's the UFC. This is the showdown for the UFC heavyweight championship of the world! Let's get it There's on. been some mind game going on here. Coleman taking a lap right in front of Maurice Smith, eyeing him down, moving forward, staring contest, but now it comes down to skill. And this is where Smith can be dangerous with his kicks. Coleman said he was going to come straight across the ring. He's now standing off, measuring distance. This favors the striker here. There goes the Coleman, double leg. Headbutts. Right hands by Coleman. Big right hands by Coleman. Ken Smith uses quickness. Smith is in a world of hurt here. He's trying to get his legs up so he can try to push and get distance from Coleman. Coleman keeping him tight. He had a bunch of punches come down there. I'm not sure any of them were super solid, but they all seem to be landing. And look at Maurice squirm. Look for openings, and he lands an elbow. That's what you need to be in the guard. A lot of people think it's laying there hanging tight, but the guard can be an active position where you move around, forcing the top man to follow, and that becomes predictable. He'll try to get his left leg out, sit to the side. Smith gets behind him and gets up. And Smith Coleman is back on his feet where he wants to be. And Coleman is tired. He's now a target. Smith can punch or kick here. He's got to try to capitalize on his feet. Oh, oh he just missed. Oh, it's, a, it's a foul. Hey, it's not on the ground. It's a foul. foul. Because Coleman that's was on the right ground. Here. If you're in any way near all fours, that's one warning, one foul. three warnings. No, one it's a disqualification, foul. but it was close. It was. Coleman it wasn't was intentional, I don't believe. Coleman was trying to get up. It wasn't as though he was stuck on the ground. Stop. He's going to have to call on all of that will. 
Smith, Smith exudes confidence right now. This is his game with the kicking. And Coleman's tired. He wants to bend over some more. Coleman really wants to bend over some more. I can't believe he's this tired. Those kicks will take their toll. I don't know if Coleman's got the energy right now to go and shoot again for a single or double leg. It certainly looks as though he's winded, whether he was punched out or... Got one back. Played possum a little bit. I don't think that's possum. He really did reach for his knees. There's the reversal by Maurice Smith. Watch for big punches. Watch for big punches. And back to the feet they go. That's where Maurice wants to be with 35 seconds left in regulation. Coleman looks a little tired again. Oh, he did. oh, wow, he's willing to turn his back. A kick by Smith. Coleman defended it fairly well. Two tired champions here. A great fight. The grappler unable to take out the striker on the ground, and they're now back on the feet. Can Coleman weather being on the feet against a master striker? That's the big question. Left hand by Maurice Smith. Nice jab. Good jab. He should do more of that. Force Coleman into committing. He's got to throw punches here. There's the horn ending regulation. And it looks like Coleman, that is more the guy who's fatigued. Know your levels, you got to suck it up. Know your levels, Vince. Imploring his fighters to go on and go running? to it. Let's Big mouse under Coleman's left eye as we begin our first of two overtime. Striking on the feet goes to Maury Smith. Striking on the ground, still to Mark Coleman. Aggressiveness. Coleman early, but it's now Maurice Smith. This is going to be a tough fight for the judges. He hasn't put together any combinations yet. A right hand oh. by Maurice Smith and a combination. There's the kick to the head. And he is now ahead. He is probably going to be ahead on the judges' card. He's taking it to Coleman, and Coleman's too tired to answer. Another kick scored by Maurice Smith. And Smith now really measuring Coleman. He hasn't been able to throw the big bomb. And there's the horn ending this heavyweight title bout. Wow. It goes to the three judges. They must vote one way or another, no draws. And this lived up to its billing. Champion striker against champion grappler, and it is so close. The grappler dominating early with a takedown and a mounted position. The striker coming back, showing great heart, great conditioning, and great punching and kicking skill from the feet. We have a unanimous decision with the winner and new UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Maurice Smith! The most exciting mixed martial arts tournament in America just became the most exciting event in the world. The UFC goes global as the octagon comes to Japan. Land of the Rising Sun, birthplace of martial arts, new world meets old world, where the tradition of unarmed gladiators matching skills is shrouded in honor and excitement. So tonight, in its Japanese debut, the UFC presents the most electrifying lineup of freestyle action ever. From the land of the Rising Sun, Ultimate Fighting Championship presents Ultimate Japan. Let's open the gates. Mike Goldberg, Jeff Flatnick, glad to be here for this universal event. The former gold medalist, Jeff, you are excited. I know not about one, but two championship bouts which are on our card this evening. Well, it'll start out with the middleweight championship, first ever in the UFC. Submission grappler Frank Shamrock taking on Olympic gold medalist Kevin Jackson. This should be a war, submission grappling versus Olympic wrestling. Our first of two championships. The middleweight division. Shamrock and Jackson now underway. And he felt Shamrock lacked stand-up fighting skills, but the Bring alliance up, with Maurice Smith. Let's go right down, right down. Bring him the, devastating Bring him the knee. Back, oh, and there's a submission on Jackson yeah. already. Bring Jeff up. Shamrock. Frank Shamrock bounced right into an arm bar. My lord, what a quick fight. Frank Shamrock with the arm bar on Kevin Jackson. Just seconds into the matchup, and Frank Shamrock, the younger brother of Ken, 
to Gary any time at all to come out of his older brother's shadow and become the first ever middleweight champion in the UFC. It took just 22 seconds. And in the heavyweight bout, Randy Couture, the natural, one of the best wrestlers in the universe against the master striker, the defending champion, Maurice Smith. This really promises to be a great matchup, striker versus grappler. It is underway, the heavyweight championship in the UFC. Smith, the striker, on his feet, can be devastating. And those leg kicks feel like a baseball bat, coming at your legs at 85 miles an hour. He is truly the most accomplished kickboxer in the world. And now still trying to strike. Couture obviously would like to take it to the ground as soon as possible. I think the key is to win for Murray Smith. Not hard. Couture coming in, and he did with that strike he just used. Keep moving, keep moving. Defense if he winds up on the ground, which he is now. Up against the fence, and actually, he's got a guillotine. Front the start of a guillotine, he usually gets the arm in front. Actually, he doesn't have his arms locked yet, but he's in a position where he might be able to. Now under 30 seconds remaining here in regulation of the championship. Bout for the title. Two-time defending champion Maurice Smith trying to win his third title. Ten Maurice, seconds work now. Right here, work right here. Hurt him at the end. As time's right, starting to tick right. down. Oh, no. And this is going to be interesting. I really think now this isn't just a big advantage for Maurice Smith here getting back to his feet. It can also be an advantage for Couture. He may be able to get some takedowns and help build his grappling where Maurice Smith, obviously, on his feet, is going to look to go ahead and strike. They both have their mouths open. Yeah, going. Both are sucking a yeah, little bit yeah. of wind, but you have to wonder here, Murray Smith going, likes Mo. to strike from his feet. Scared, Mo. Can Randy him out the out the oh, there's a big hit with the leg, but Randy goes right for the single leg, but that, again, punishment with those chops to the leg on the big kick of the master striker. It's a trail. Couture said, kick me, I'll take you down, and that's exactly what happened. Hard to say who wins that exchange. It looks very much now that the decision is going to be rendered by the judges ultimately. Ten seconds remains. Five seconds now. And this is going to go to the judges. What a great fight. What a great fight. Two conditioned, two superior athletes. Maurice Smith doesn't look real confident. Neither does Randy. Neither is showing anyone that they feel they are the winner. I give grappling to Couture, I give aggressiveness to both. Might be able to hedge that to, to Couture because he was able to get to the positions he wanted. Striking, I think, is basically even. So it's going to be a tough call. The winner and new UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Randy the Natural Couture. So for the first time in 17 years of competition, Maurice Smith has lost the title defense. But this night ends with a new champion, Randy Couture. From the state of Oregon, a natural champion, a natural born winner. He stole the hearts of those in Shin Yokohama. So for my partner, Jeff Blatnick, and a fine crew here in Japan, I'm Mike Goldberg saying so long. See you in New Orleans.